Um, I wanted to take a look at some crystals today. And these are really old school crystals. These go from uh, 1 megahertz, 1.8 megahertz, 2 megahertz, and 3 megahertz. So very, very low frequency crystals. A lot of people have a hard time driving these crystals because of the different conditions. You know, uh, certain circuits that you'll see online are good for, you know, maybe 8, giga, 8 megahertz crystal, but they don't really work too good with these low frequency crystals. And uh, so we're going to do a couple things. First, let's talk about the circuit we're going to use. Um, so I think I showed this page before in a different video. Um, when you see an oscillator design that uses this type of LC resonant circuit, when you take off the center of the capacitors here, this is a Colpitts type oscillation. And if you take it off the center of the inductor, you get a um, Hartley oscillator, okay? Well, we're going to be using a, a Colpitts oscillator today. <clears throat> and you can find lots of examples of Colpitt oscillators. Uh, there's a bunch here in the book. Uh, this is the ARRL handbook. Um, but yeah, lots of different, lots of different ways to do it. All right, let me get rid of this book out of my way. All right, so uh, this is the circuit that I'm going to use today. I just found some parts put in it. I'm going to be using a 2N2222. I just had that in a video, so I thought I'd use it today. Um, and we are going to be using a Colpitz configuration. Here are the two capacitors. And uh, normally you would have an inductor uh, uh, in parallel with these two um, with these two capacitors. So we need an inductor in there, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and first build this with an inductor. I'll put I'll put an inductor right here. This is just DC biasing for the. Uh, for the transistor, but I'll put a uh, an inductor here and make this an LC circuit. Okay, so let me uh, let me get ready ready for that. All right, I'm waiting for my scope to uh, boot up. Uh, but here's the inductor right here, and uh, I have that in the circuit, and I'm going to have 10 volts of VCC. So I'll put that on here, and we'll put the oscilloscope probe times time 10 probe, uh, looking at the output. And let's go see what it looks like. All right, uh, so we have something here. Let's see, first we have to tell it we have a times 10 probe. Times 10, all right. So let's uh, make it smaller. I'll bring the ground reference down. And there we go, we have an oscillation. Oops. And uh, we have this, um, Spike down here. Let me see if that's a ground or. I did find my um, my little spring for the uh, scope probe. So let's put a little spring on it. Oops, sorry for reaching the camera here. We'll shorten our lead length on our. Let's see. Let's put that there and here. No, it doesn't look any different doesn't look any different so we'll go ahead and use the uh, probe then the circuit just has a bit of a bit of bounce to it that's fine it is oscillating don't expect these things to be perfect oscillators these uh, culpits and Hartley and stuff you, you sometimes you have to clean them up uh, sometimes you're just gonna be putting them through some capacitors and rounding them off and calling them a sine wave. Usually in cir circuits like radios and stuff, you're gonna put in, putting so much filter in there that you just need the fundamental. You can, you can filter out all the harmonics. So the shape of the waveform doesn't really matter too much. But we can see here the transistor conduct and then it droops down and then it fires again. So that's just the way this one is working, all right? And <clears throat> let's see here, let's turn on the frequency counter. And what do we have? We have 670 kilohertz, so about 0.6 megahertz, 0.7 megahertz, something like that. Okay, so let's go back down. Let me pull out the uh, inductor and we'll put a crystal. This is the one megahertz crystal, but the one megahertz crystal in its place. So it's going to act as the, uh, it's going to act as the inductor. 
triggering's, triggering's a bit off here. Oops, way down there. There we go. And so we're at 999.97 kilohertz. Yeah. And the waveform looks basically the same. So it doesn't really matter if we're using an inductor or we're using a, a, a crystal. Uh, the functionality of the, of the uh, circuit is going to be about the same. So there you go. Uh, again, we have this fast rise time the, and then the droopiness. Uh, let's go ahead and pop in some other crystals while we're here. I'll pop in the, uh, in the next one. <clears throat> this is a 1.792 megahertz crystal. There we go. Perfect. 1.792. This is a 2 megahertz crystal. Very nice. 9996. And a 3 megahertz crystal. 3.0002. Very, very nice. All right, so um, these these big crystals uh, have to be, um, you kind of need to start out with a fairly slow circuit, right? I have these 340 picofarad capacitors here and a fancy, you know, 10 megahertz version of this. These would probably be around 20 picofarads instead of 340 picofarads. So yeah, you need to make these bigger for your, uh, for your slow, slow crystals. I mean, back in the day, a couple megahertz was fast. <laughs> your 8080 was only running at a megahertz. So yeah, there you go. Um, so one of the things that I think people are confused about with um, crystals is um, they look at a book and they're shown the um, characteristics of a, fil of a uh, crystal. They're put on a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator and they're swept. So you look at the frequency response of a crystal and they say, oh, here's the series resonance and here's the parallel resonance and you get this weird shape uh, thing. So I've used my, my siglant and I put on this one megahertz crystal and you can see here that we have um, that shape that you'll see in books. And I know initially I was kind of confused about that shape. And I think I, I assumed too many things. And um, if I had only considered how the crystal is being used in the circuit, it's being used in the circuit as a voltage device, right? And the picture that you get in the books is a logarithmic power in the y-axis. And I'm not interested in logarithmic power when I am building a transistor circuit. I really am interested in the um, voltage. So if you put your um, spectrum analyzer into linear mode and measure volts, you basically get something that makes much, much more sense. It's just it only lets through one wavelength and it just attenuates all other things. And so, you know, a hundred percent voltage in the center and then everything else is killed. So yeah, I think sometimes using a spectrum analyzer just because you can, and you take a picture just because you can, doesn't necessarily mean that's the best visualization that you really want to have. And, and I think for crystals, that's one of those where if you just look at it, look at it with a voltage, a linear, a linear sweep with voltage, it just uh, seems to make more sense. Anyway, there you go. <clears throat> just me playing in the garage with some uh, crystals that I had, and I was just going to put those away. I had, a long time ago, I had somebody ask me about these one megahertz crystals, and I, I don't remember who it was, but... Uh, Here's an, and I told them just use a TTL. Most of the time, if you just use a TTL buffer, a 7404 inverter, these things will oscillate really easy with a, something like a 7404. But if you actually want to build your own circuit, like a Colpitz, um, just need to make it with bigger capacitors.